Okay, so this, these are some examples of equations that are quadratic. Now, you look at this problem and you say, well, I thought quadratic was when you had an x and an x squared, and here I don't. I have an x squared and an x to the fourth. Okay, to be quadratic, the only thing that needs to happen is this term in the middle. If we square it, we would need to get that, that variable there. And notice if we took x squared and squared it, we would get x to the fourth. Okay, so that's what makes it quadratic in form. Now, we're going to use the same methods to solve. Um, hopefully, they'll factor because that's the easiest way to go. So remember our steps for factoring, it had to be equal to 0, which this one is. And then we factor. There's not a number in front of our x to the fourth. So we just go ahead and we look at our last term, which is 2. We want factors of 2 that add to equal that middle term, maybe a 3. Well, 1 and 2 are only factors. Notice that they're both negative. Negative 1 plus negative 2 gives me negative 3 in the middle. And negative 1 times negative 2 gives me a positive 2 on the end. So those work perfectly. Now, what you want to be careful of here is when you set up your parentheses and write down your factors, notice we're splitting not an x squared, but an x to the fourth. So when we split it into two factors, we cut it in half. We have an x squared here and an x squared here. Instead of just an x, they're x squared. So my factors are x squared minus 1 and x squared minus 2. So again, we set it equal to 0, we factor, we've done that. Then you set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So I have x squared minus 1 equals 0, and x squared minus 2 equals 0. We want to solve both of those. I'm going to go ahead and add 1 to both sides here. You want to be careful. You get all of your answers. And I get x squared equals 1. How do you get rid of a squared? We have to finish you take the square root of both sides and always put plus or minus. So here my answer is x equals plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. So there's two answers. Let's go and do the other one. So we go ahead and add 2 to both sides, and we get x squared equals 2. How do you get rid of a squared? You take the square root. And always put plus or minus. So I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Notice this had four solutions, 1, negative 1, root 2, and negative root 2. There are all of our solutions. Okay? And you would want to go back up and check those to make sure they actually work. All right, here we go again. So this is quadratic in form, because notice if we squared this x to the third, if you square that, you get x to the sixth, which is what we have on our front term. Let's try to factor. It's already set equal to 0, so we want factors of 8 that add to equal negative 9. Factors of 8 are 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. If 1 and 8 are both negative, um, negative 1 plus negative 8 is negative 9 in the middle, and negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8 on the end. So perfect, this actually factors. Again, be very careful with these forms. When you're splitting it into 2, this was an x to the 6. So as we split it into two different factors, cut that in half. So we'd have x to the 3rd in each one. One will be x to the 3rd minus 8. The other will be x to the 3rd minus 1. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so this one I add 1 to both sides, and I get x to the third equals 1. How do you get rid of a third? You do the, the reciprocal. So we go x to the 1 third, or the third root. Now with thirds, you do not put plus or minus. When it's an odd number, you just have one solution there. So the third root of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 is 3, excuse me, is 1. So there's first answer is x equals 1. 
the second one. We add 8 to both sides. And I have x to the third equals 8. Again, to get rid of the third, we go to the one-third, or we do the third root. And the question here is, what times itself 3 times equals 8? The answer is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 8 to the one-third power is 2. You would want to go back up and check those, but these do, in fact, check in our original equation. All right, here's another one. I don't know if you believe me, but this is quadratic. Um, do you know what square root means? What power is square root? It's actually the one-half power. So what we have here is x to the first power minus 3, x to the one-half power minus 4 equals 0. So notice, if you will, that, again, to be quadratic, this middle one, if we squared it, so if we square x to the one-half, what do we get? x to the first power, which is that leading term. So this is quadratic, and we can go ahead, if it'll factor, we can try and solve by factoring. So we look at our end term, negative 4. We need factors of negative 4 that add to equal negative 3. Our factors that are possible are 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Well, if we take the 1 and the 4, and the 1 is positive, and the 4 is negative, they multiply to be negative 4 and add to equal negative 3. So those will work for us. We separate them into our parentheses. Again, be careful on these that are quadratic in form. When we take 1, x to the first power, if we separate it into 2, we cut it in half. So we have x to the 1 half and x to the 1 half power here. So our factors are x to the 1 half plus 1 and x to the 1 half minus 4. We set each one equal to 0 and solve it. Subtract 1 from both sides. I get x to the 1 half equals negative 1. How do you get rid of 1 half? You square. So I square both sides, and I get x equals 1. The other one, I add 4 to both sides to isolate the x to the 1 half. How do you get rid of a 1 half power? You square it. And I get x equals 16. So I have two solutions, x equals 16 and x equals 1. I do want to check those because I notice I had a radical. You have to check when you have radical equations. So let's check x equals uh, 1. If we replace the x's with 1's in our original problem, we'd have 1 minus 3 times the square root of 1 minus 4. Does that equal 0? That gives me 1 minus 3 minus 4, which is not even close to 0. Okay, negative 6 does not equal 0. So x equals 1 is extraneous. It's not a solution. Let's try the 16. If I have 16 minus 3 times the square root of 16, minus 4, does that equal 0? That would give me 16 minus 3 times the square root of 16 is 4. 3 times 4 gives me 12. Minus 4, does that equal 0? Yes, it does. So x equals 16 is our only solution here. Again, when you have radicals, always check your answer. All right, here is one last problem that is quadratic in form, and we're going to solve it. So notice the way I know it's quadratic is this term here, x to the 1 third. If I square that, I get x to the 2 thirds, which is my leading term here. Right. We take that end number, negative 8. We want factors that equal the middle, negative 2. Factors of 8 are 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. If I do a positive 2 and negative 4, when I add them, I get that middle term, negative 2. When I multiply, I get the end term, negative 8. Separate those. Now, when we separate, 
we had two thirds, so we cut that in half. That would give me an x to the one third in each parenthesis. My factors I was using was a plus two and a minus four. So there we have it factored. We set each factor equal to zero and solve. How do you get rid of a one-third? You take it to the third power. And x2 to the third is 8. Do the other one. x to the one-third gives me 4. Take that to the third power. And I get 64. So my two solutions, excuse me, this was a negative 2. That makes that negative 8. My two solutions are negative 8 and 64.